Hey folks, my name is Misty Jones Simpson. I am an Ableton certified trainer and an assistant professor out at Middle Tennessee State University, which is right in the backyard of Nashville, uh, where I teach in the audio production department. And today, uh, I'm really excited about Live 11, and so I thought I would demo one of the new devices for you today. Today, I want to show you Pitch Loop 89, which is a brand new Max for Live device that is available with Live 11 Suite. Uh, and this device was built by Robert Henke. That is this Texan's best effort at trying to produce his name correctly. I did my research, uh, so I hope I'm not slaughtering it there. But uh, Robert Henke is uh, one of the co-creators of Ableton Live. Uh, not only that, he's a really accomplished artist. And so you should check out his website. Uh, you can find out more about him, uh, his project Monolake, among his other things that he's done. Under engineering, you can see all the things that he's built. Uh, Granulator is another one of my favorite devices that he's built. Uh, his latest device being Pitch Loop 89, which is what I'm going to demo today. Uh, this device was partly inspired by the DHM 89B2. It's a pitch shifting delay. And so uh, a lot of the things that he was able to capture are not only the basic capabilities of the hardware, but he was able to really uh, pull off some things that the normal hardware can't even do because we obviously have some more capabilities with, with things being digital. Uh, but this was uh, part of the inspiration for this device. Uh, it is a pitch shifting delay. And so uh, I'm going to demo this here today. Uh, I am a bit of a disclaimer here. I'm using a beta version. So by the time uh, Live 11 hits the streets, it might look a little different, feel a little different. So just a bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, so I've got Pitch Loop 89 thrown on a track with a vocal sample. sample. And the, the sample that I'm using is actually from a new pack uh, called Voice Box, which is uh, also really killer. And so I've just got this vocal sample here, and when I hit play with Pitch Loop on the track, I hear the delayed, uh, I hear the dry signal and the delayed signal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this vocal sample just to make sure you understand the basics of how this device works. Then we're going to jump into using this in a little bit more uh, crazy way. So I thought it might be easiest to understand with just a basic vocal sample. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the position knob. And right now the delayed signal is playing pretty tightly close to the original position. But if we crank this out to about 50% and we can see the display here in the middle giving us this visual, the position now of the delayed signal is going to be about halfway through. This is in relation to the original signal. So I love that the visual here gives us a little bit better understanding of exactly where the signal is, is playing back. Now the most fun thing about this device is that we can we can shift the pitch. And right now we've got uh, two delays actually, one for the left channel, one for the right. Right now these are locked together in sync. So if I make uh, an adjustment on one uh, channel, the same thing happens on the other channel. So let's jump right in and let's do some pitch shifting. Uh, I'm going to pitch uh, these down to different intervals here. And now when I hit play... I've got the delayed signals shifted to these two intervals. And one thing I love to, to do with this device is, is throw it completely wet and forget about the original signal. And now I've got this very abstract, weird vocal thing happening. Now, one of my favorite things about this device is the freeze button. So if I let this play and I hit freeze, it's going to freeze whatever position we're at when I stop it. Now I can change that position by just cranking through the position knob here. And now I'm kind of developing this pad-like sound. In fact, I want to go ahead and throw echo on this track because I love echo on just about everything. And so I can select some different positions here. I can blur this even further by cranking up random, which will randomize the position. And then segment controls the length of these loops, so to speak, that I'm now creating since I've got freeze on. So I can choose a really tight segment, which gives me this kind of blurred hive of bees kind of sound, which I love. I can try this at different positions here. Longer segments. Now, instead of just cranking up random, we could also randomize the position here. Uh, with an LFO. We've got an LFO for each channel here. So let's just crank up the depth and 
we're going to get that same movement here according to the rate that we've dialed up. Now, what uh, the next thing I love to do here is let's zero these pitches back out. Let's, uh, with them locked together here, now let's just kind of play the pitch knob. And we can start to play this kind of as an instrument here just by playing the pitch. Choose a tighter segment here. We've got a vibrato. We can uh, apply some pitch modulation with some LFOs for each channel. We can even filter that out. We've got to uh, cut the lows here with our filters. So now I've got this kind of abstract, almost uh, pad-like jittery vocal sound here that I've created. So uh, with that basic demo in mind, what I want to do now is I want to go to another track and show you how I'm using this uh, with uh, a synthesizer drone that I've created here. So let me give you a little bit of backstory here before we crank up pitch loop on this guy. So I've created a patch here in Wavetable, and I've got just one MIDI note playing. So I've got this long drone here that I've created. And then the other thing that's happening here is I have some pretty wacky settings here on Echo. Some uh, modulation happening with the delay and some other crazy things. Now this is just the current setting of my macros that I've made here. Of course we know that macros are kind of like our greatest hits of parameters that we want quick access to here on these super knobs that I call them here at the front. Uh, and one of the things that I love that's also new in Live 11 is this randomize button. So uh, when I hit randomize, it's going to randomize the position of all of these macros here. And by just doing that, I get this kind of performed version of this drone that's random every time I hit the button. I'm lately into really weird abstract instrumentals and I love how this randomize button lets me create this noise machine now. So before I get lost in that, because I it's easy for me to get lost in just the process of doing this, let me show you how I'm going to throw pitch loop on here. So uh, I've already got this drone, right? So let's use pitch loop to create another drone a pitch shifted drone that kind of rolls underneath. So uh, let's turn pitch loop on. Uh, and I've got a mix of the dry wet here. And what I'm gonna show you, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna randomize the position. But then what I'm gonna do is, even without this frozen, this works, let's create a really tight, uh, short segment. Hear that? We get that distorted hive of bees kind of sound. Here it is with a longer segment so you can tell the difference. There it is with without. And then cranking in a really tight segment. We get that noisy... Uh, that noisy effect. And really it's just the position... Uh, it's in, in combination of just a really short segment and the position being so random and jumping all over the place that gives it that really cool effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the pitch kind of perform against the drone just by cranking the pitch knob. Now, that's all and well and good just cranking the knob here with a mouse, but what would be uh, me even more advantageous is let's map this to a macro. Let's add that up here to the bank of macros that we already have. So I'm going to control click or right click on the pitch knob, I'm going to say map to macro 6. Now I only have to map one because these are locked together, so when one, macro, uh, one pitch knob moves, the other pitch knob for the other channel will move as well. So let's go back and now I've got this mapped, and you probably see where I'm going with this, but now let's take advantage of hitting random, and now we can kind of randomly perform the pitch here just by hitting the random button. So uh, let's hit play and let's see what happens. All 
All right, so before I get too lost, let's put this all together. I've got a drum loop that I have just kind of vibing in the background, which I pulled uh, from another Ableton pack called the Crim de la Crate, uh, which is a great set of a bunch of different, uh, mainly acoustic drum grooves. And so uh, let's hear this all in context here. Let's perform a little bit just by hitting the random button. going I, the funniest thing about doing these videos is I forget you're out there sometimes uh, I love I love how things evolve randomly in real time and there are so many cool new things on live 11 that work in the random aspect there are so many other things uh, randomized velocity probability some of the things which uh, I'm sure you've seen in some other videos uh, uh, but doing things this way again with this random button which is brand new uh, is really is a game changer for me uh, but anyway I hope that's that I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can use pitch loop I, I know sometimes a lot of these delay devices can be pretty intimidating uh, and so I hope today uh, that this uh, simplifies it, helps it to break it down in a way that, that is a little bit uh, hopefully easier to understand. And I want to hear how you're using it, uh, are, how you're using it and abusing it on uh, drums, vocals, whatever. I'd love to hear your ideas. So drop me a comment and let me know what you come up with this crazy device. So that's Pitch Loop 89. Let me know your thoughts and have fun creating.